Okay, well, welcome back. Now that we're taking a look at, taking a look at the definite integral and how to evaluate a definite integral, we're going to take a look at a lot of the properties of definite integrals. We're kind of working backwards here, so we're going back to uh, a previous section. Um, and and so this, in this problems in these problems, you won't work a whole, out a whole lot of definite integrals. You'll just be pl applying these properties. So these are all properties you need to know. Um, with definite integrals, the c value is a constant, it's a real number, so we're integrating from a to b, that's my limits of integration of the constant c, that's just going to be c times b minus a. Remember that, that the c value is a constant, that means it's a horizontal line, so what this forms right here is going to be a rectangle, and you'll find the area of the rectangle where the c value is the height of the rectangle and this is the width. Um, in this particular case, the c times f of x dx, we can pull that c out front. We've been doing that, so that's just a common sense of f of x dx. Um, sometimes finding the area under the curve that's bound by the x-axis and that curve can be easier to find uh, the value of the integral than just taking the antiderivative. Sometimes taking the antiderivative is tough. Um, if the limits are the same, if you're a to a, you have no area, zero. Um, sometimes you'll see uh, what we call an improper integral, where the lower limit is, uh, is larger than the upper limit, and that's what this says right here. Then we can switch it around. Um, we can put the lower limit down here, d, and the upper limit, c. Um, so it's the way we normally have it, and we multiply it by, by a negative 1. Uh, this one says that uh, what I can do is, is I can just take the polynomial function, and I can split it up into its separate pieces. I can integrate each one of them individually. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> and then finally, this one right here um, establishes that what I can do is I can take a region and I can split it up. So like if, if my C value, it doesn't even have to be between A and B, but I can find the area between A and C, and I can add it and find the area between C and B, and I put that all together and I find that finds the total area between A and B. Sometimes you'll have to do that. Sometimes uh, uh, it's easier to do it that way. You'll have part of it that's area, area that's under the curve, or you'll have some different pieces of the function where you might have like a semicircle, a trapezoid, a triangle, all put together, and you just want to find the area of each one individually, and that evaluates the, the integral. Um, what's going to happen here, this is kind of a formality, but if you know a function, if f of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x and a to b, um, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is greater than or equal to 0. And then finally, uh, if, uh, another one is that if f of x is greater than or equal to g of x for all x and a to b, then the value of the integral is going to be greater as well. Uh, again, a little bit of common sense and just some theorems that uh, you should have down in your notes somewhere. Um, and the next couple of ones are the mean value theorem and the average value of function, and I will work out an example on these ones. Um, the mean value theorem is going to establish um, on the interval if I were to have, if I were to take this value, um, I want to find the z value where the average value is, is, is accomplished. And this will make more sense when I go to my next slide in a minute. Um, if it's continuous on, a, on an interval, if it's continuous on an interval from a to b, then there's a number z between a and b such that the average value is going to be achieved at that, at that number. The z value is an x coordinate. Okay, that's not often asked. Remember, we had mean value theorem as it applied to derivatives in our first semester. It's more often asked that way. This is mean value theorem as it applies to integral. This is not very often asked. However, the next concept is, and this I'll, I'll put it all together in my next slide, and I'll and I'll show you how this works together. The average value of the function. This is a hundred percent chance that it will be on the AP exam. Always is. To find the average value of a function, it's one over the upper limit minus the lower limit of the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now, somewhere between a and b, there exists a value z such that a average value is achieved, and that's what the mean value theorem for integral says. But the average value is what you're trying to find. That's usually what, what's going on. So let's just take this. Let's just say I have an integral from 0 up to 3 of x squared dx. If I work that out, I get 1 third um, times x cubed at 0 and 3, which is going to be 1 third of 27 minus 0, or 9. If I asked you the average value of x squared on the interval from 0 to 3, it's simply 1 over 3 minus 0 times 9, the value of the integral. So this would be 3. So the average value of the function on this interval between 0 and 3 is 3. 
by the mean value theorem, the mean value theorem says, okay, well, somewhere on the interval between 0 and 3, the integrand, z squared, has to equal the average value, which is 3. You saw that for z, that occurs at the square root of 3. It's only positive square root of 3 because it's got to be the inter on the interval between 0 and 3. So, lots of problems where you're working with these properties. You're going to do lots of different stuff with the properties that I had up there on the first slide. You will do a little bit with this average value. Um, and we're going to combine average value with the definite integral a little bit later on in our reviews and stuff. Um, and that's where it really kind of starts coming together. And then when you also, um, when we get into kind of the geometry presentation of all of this, uh, it should make a little bit more sense to you. So good luck, and uh, hope you're doing well.